यशोमतीन जय राधा कुंज बिहार जय राधा कुंज बिहार जय गोपीचंद वल्लभरी जय गो जय गोपीचंद वल्लभ गिरिवार दाहरी सौरनंदन ब्रजन हंजन यसौरनंदन ब्रजन हंजन चमून थीरा गान चारी जम जमून थीरा जय राधा कुंज बिहारी जय राधा कुंज बिहार जय गोपीचंद वल्लभ गिरिवार जय गोपीजन वल्लभ गिरिवार सूरनंदन ब्रजन हंजनायस जसौरनंदन ब्रजन हंजन जमून थीरा जमून थीरा वन छीरा कुंज बिहार जय राधा कुंज बिहार गोर पे मिलन दे हरि हरि बो शिव प्रभु पाद की जय शिव प्रभु पाद की जय A lot of dust on the Bhagavatam. <laughs> if you don't clean it, the dust sticks on. And it looks like the design of the cover, but it's not. <laughs> it's the, the dust. Number one principle in, in temple life is cleanliness. Can't have it. <laughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo 
Canto 8, chapter 12, verse number 37. Mohini Murti bewilders Lord Shiva. Okay. Tamaviklavam aridam Alaksya marusudanaha Uvacha parama prito Bibratswam parusim tanum Tamaviklavam aridam Alaksya Marusudanaha Uvacha Paramam Brito Bibratswam Parusim Tanum Chant <laughs> Anyone else? <clears throat> Tam. Him. Lord Shiva. Aviklavam. Without being agitated by the incident that had taken place. Avridam. Without being ashamed. Ah, Laksha. Seeing Madhu Sudanaha, Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is known as Madhu Sudana, the killer of the demon Madhu. Uvacha said, Paramam Pritaha, being very pleased, Bibrat. Asu unas I'm sorry, assuming Swam his own Paurusim original Tanum form Translation Seeing Lord Shiva unagitated and unashamed, Lord Vishnu Madhusanda Madhusudana was very pleased. He thus resumed his original form and spoke as follows. Mm -hmm. Purport. Although Lord Shiva was aghast at the potency of Lord Vishnu, he did not feel ashamed. Rather, he was proud to be defeated by Lord Vishnu. Nothing is hidden from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, for he is indeed in everyone's heart. Indeed, the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 15.15, Sarvashi Jahamridisani Visto, cha. I am seated in everyone's heart, and for me comes remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. Whatever happened had taken place under the direction of the Supreme Personality of God, and therefore there was no cause to be sorry or ashamed. Although Lord Shiva is never defeated by anyone, 
When defeated by Lord Vishnu, he felt proud that he had such an exalted and powerful master. Omagyan timidandasya ganajana salakaya chaksu un militam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha nama om vishnu padaya krishna pristaya bhutale shri bhakti bhakti vedanta swami ti namini namaste sarasari devi gaura vani vajarini nivase sasuni vari vasarya desatarane pancha tattva makam krishnam bhakta rupa sarupa kam bhakta avatar bhakta kyam namami bhakti shakti kam pancha kalvata rupa scha vipasena veva cha vatitanam pavane bhyo vaishna ve bhyo namaho namaha hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare rama not rama rama <laughs> No Ramo is allowed. <laughs> this is not the Italian barbers. It's uh, Rama. He's he's God. Okay. So. Okay. So this particular purport is um, similar to yesterday's purport, or the day in the previous verse. Although Lord Shiva was apparently uh, put in a very awkward situation, he didn't feel. Uh, ashamed, he wasn't agitated. In fact, he felt proud. This is quite incredible when you think about it. You know, anybody who would have been put in that situation would have been embarrassed, ashamed, or in some ways felt negative. Shiva felt the opposite. And it's interesting because this, his feeling actually pleased the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is an interesting point because in our Krishna conscious practice, sometimes we're put into difficult situations by the arrangement of the Lord. And uh, we should also think and also appreciate that it's by the arrangement of the Lord that this particular situation has come upon me. And therefore, there's an opportunity for me to uh, become more purified in Krishna consciousness to make more advancement in spiritual life. The whole process of devotional service is again become purified. <laughs> That's the process. And Krishna is always arranging through the external energy, or sometimes even directly, many times directly, um, for his devotee to get purified. Sometimes we don't like that. We think everything should go on really nice. <laughs> and, you know prasadam should be nice and everybody should be nice and the weather should be nice and the temple should be nice and the temple president shouldn't bother me. <laughs> so many different things. <laughs> we think, oh, I'm in Hare Krishna land. Everything is supposed to be nice. That's what the books say. <laughs> but uh, it's not like that. <laughs> It is nice, but it's not. But it's nice from another angle of vision. It's nice because it's good for you. <laughs> it's good for you. It's, it's actually there's some meaning or some message that's there that is there for to help us become a little better at executing Krishna consciousness. So Krishna is always doing that through the external energy, through his devotees, through situations. And Shiva's been put into this situation, and he's like, and it's, you know, Prabhupada makes that point, he's never defeated, and he was now defeated. Shiva never gets defeated, he's so he's very powerful, extremely powerful. And in fact, sometimes they say he's, he's more even power, more powerful than Lord Brahma. But uh, his power has been, uh, in what we say, checked <laughs> by the Lord's superior power and the Supreme Person. This is another example of those who have a problem with deciding who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There's always contentions sometimes between people in different traditions that, yes, mm -hmm. the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as it says in the Shiva Purana, is Lord Shiva. <laughs> Or in other Puranas also mentions. 
But uh, then again, throughout the Vedic literature, Krishna is given that exalted position by by uh, by the scriptures. So sometimes there's a a quandary, a discussion, sometimes even argument, who's the supreme? So when we go through the Bhagavatam, we find various incidents that help us understand this point clearly, that she, the Krishna is the supreme and Shiva is simply his servant. More than his servant, he's that he's that perfect servant. He's Vaishnava Nam Yata Sambhu. So exalted, so powerful. And you think, well, you know, when a person is powerful and exalted and never gets defeated, once they get defeated, there might be some change in their attitude. But not Shiva. He he actually was glad, happy to get defeated, proud to get defeated, and felt, wow, I have such a great master. <laughs> this is nice. You know, sometimes we see in our Krishna conscious, you know, the spiritual master tells you what to do and you don't like it. <laughs> you're defeated. <laughs> you, on paper you're defeated, but not in your mind. Nah. Nah, he, he doesn't know the whole story. <laughs> I'm going to write him a letter. Not a letter, I'm going to write him actually a book. <laughs> Explaining my position. <laughs> and so, yeah, we get that. Because it's the duty it's the, of the spiritual master to push the disciple forward. That's their duty, to give them a little bit of a push in a certain direction so they somehow wake up to something or understand something better, become a little bit de more detached. Something. That's why it's always good to have the association of the spiritual master. Or we might say the association of senior devotees who can also have that same effect upon us. Um, if we get too lax and too easy and start just taking Krishna consciousness very easy, and then Maya just walks in and just makes a mess out of you. <laughs> takes you and dusts the floor with you. <laughs> and then pretty much you're, after some time you're realizing what the hell happened. You know? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> because you're taking it easy. This process, you can't take it easy. <laughs> because material energy is so strong, it's always pushing. As Prabhupada makes the example, the material energy is like a river flowing in a certain direction. And it's flowing pretty fast. And when you're trying to swim in the opposite direction, <laughs> so you have to swim against the current. <laughs> so you have to learn to become a good swimmer. And if you are, you're proficient enough, you can swim against the current to a certain degree. But if you start, you know, floating on your little raft, <laughs> or you start, you know, just uh, doing little baby strokes there, then all of a sudden the water, the water will push you back and then in the same direction it's going. So this is material energy. And we have to be always will be on top of that every minute, not every minute, every millisecond. <laughs> and we have to be Krishna conscious. There's no in between. So as soon as you forget Krishna or as soon as you start thinking everything is nice, <laughs> it is nice, I'm a devotee, I'm in the association with other devotees. I have the process of the devotional service. I have so much service. I have a wonderful master. All these things make everything nice, but that makes you understand that you have to work and continue to, to and struggle in Krishna consciousness. It's a struggle. <clears throat> and then the ultimate principle is you go back home, back to Godhead. <clears throat> If you fail to struggle now, then you'll have to struggle next life and try again. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and you can't avoid the struggle. That's just the way the material energy is. And as Prabhupada uses three points, he says, 
the material energy is very strong. The living entity is uh, uh, small, very small, tiny, jiva. And Krishna is a hoaxaja. He said, these are the three obstacles. Krishna is beyond the reach of your senses. The material energy is always pushing you in a certain direction. And you're very tiny. You're not very able to deal with that. So there are so many defects from our position. But then again, the mercy is there. <clears throat> you have to take the mercy. And we should always think, we should always thinking how to improve our Krishna consciousness. What do I have to do? Or what attitude do I have to adopt? Something to make me more serious and more effective in the execution of my devotional service. Devotees should always be thinking like that. Not that we go through the activities of devotional service, we remain very lackadaisical. Devotee's mind is always working. It doesn't sleep. <laughs> That's what we do later on <laughs> when it comes when the when the sun out and keep the keep the eyes open when the sun is out <laughs> when the darkness comes and after some time you can those eyelids start to slowly close but yeah so that's why they say jeep jago jeep jago go to chanda bole Kota Nidra Jayomaya Pisachira Kole. Excuse me. Something got stuck. Maybe it's my Krishna consciousness. <laughs> it got stuck. <laughs> so, <laughs> Hare Krishna. I have to unstuck it. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Okay, now it's working. Okay. <laughs> Put your foot on the gas and get the pedal to the metal <laughs> and zoom away to Vaikuntha. No, Goloka. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's not a play. It's not a time to get lax because it is, uh, especially in the winter time where it's um, there's more energy needed in order to perform devotional service. You have to somehow or other fight against the cold weather, <clears throat> fight against the so many things. It's just, and of course, this is flu season. They're, called, they're talking about coronavirus, but then Mrs. Flu comes in to, Hello, Mrs. Flu, how are you? I'm looking for some candidates. Okay. <laughs> so she's always active looking for somebody. Flu season, virus season, colds, fevers, so many things. December is a month for people who generally get more sick than other time. <clears throat> I remember last year we were here in uh, Ljubljana, and this is the month that all the devotees got, not all, but the... Many of the devotees got sick last month, remember? Right? You went to Christmas vacation and you took a long vacation. <laughs> Forgot to come back. <laughs> so it was, yeah, because devotees were getting sick. So you have to be very careful. And make sure you eat properly and uh, uh, get enough rest. Not in the temple. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Get some exercise. I know it's hard to exercise during this time, but it's important you do that. And read the books, because now as the weather becomes cold, we more go internal, and we have more time for uh, reading and studying. So here's a good time to read those books that you wanted to read, and especially keep Srimad Bhagavatam very foremost in the reading. So... Um, Never, never get lazy. <clears throat> Always become diligent. How can I serve now? That's the, that's the principle. The mind should always be thinking, how can I serve now? Or at least be thinking of Krishna, either one of those two. 
Either you're thinking how to serve and then serving, and then or else you're thinking of Krishna. If you're in that energy, then you are free from the effects of the material energy. And then you'll make nice progress. Sometimes we have our favorite times of the year. <clears throat> Maybe December is not the favorite one for some of us. But still, the material energy always gives you uh, opportunities to somehow or other move forward if you if you look for it. Look for it very carefully, like that. And so, um, a devotee, <clears throat> even if they're put into a difficult situation, <coughs> doesn't complain or doesn't blame anybody else. Sometimes, like to blame somebody. Well, it's his fault because this is what happened to me. <laughs> if she did it, it's not my fault. Sometimes we don't say it, but we think like that. <coughs> hmm. So, yeah, we have to be somewhat, what we say, uh, always remembering Krishna or always thinking how to serve like that. Devotees take rest. Why do they take rest? So they can get energy for the next day. The body rejuvenates during the rest period. So we can serve. We don't take rest we're like, whew, wow, finally got to go to sleep. Whew. Boy, I've been feeling terrible. I want to just void out and go into the, the, the no zone, you know. And just me and nothing. <laughs> Because the, the non-devotees, they sleep so much. Why? It's not always because they're tired, but it's because they're frustrated. Because material life does bring frustration. And sleep is more like a way out of the frustration, but it's not the solution, of course. So people sleep so much just because they're not happy. <clears throat> when you're happy, you don't sleep so much. The more happy you are, the more you want to use, the more you want to express that happiness naturally through the activities of devotional service like that. And so devotees think, oh, I got to sleep. But it's necessary to keep body and mind together and also the soul. So, yeah, I do that, but I can't wait for that alarm clock to, get, to go. ding a ling a ling a ling a ling Oh, yes, time to get up. It's, I told you that one story, maybe you weren't here for it, some of you, that one, <clears throat> that one devotee, his one girl was chasing him, wanted to marry him, one brahmachari, he was the leader of the brahmacharis, <laughs> and she kept, you know, she was going to the altar every day, making her prayers, you know, I need this Prabhu for my Mahaprabhu, you know. <laughs> So she wanted to a prabhu. She wanted to have a, a prabhu in her life. <clears throat> so she was praying to the, you know, to to Mahaprabhu for prabhu, you know. <laughs> and so uh, we were noticing that. I used to notice that she'd go on the altar or go right in front of the deities and do her thing. And so this one devotee, he found out that she was after him. Then he was thinking, hmm, should I get married or should I not? He was the leader of the brahmacharis. So he, uh, he decided, he couldn't decide. And the different devotees were saying, no, no, you, you know, stay, stay brahmachari. Others were saying, oh, you may, you know, and there were different opinions. And so he decided to make an experiment. So we had a lake in New Vrindavan, which was right across this, from the temple. It was a man-made lake. <clears throat> And uh, so he decided, we had a raft. We built a lake and we put a raft in the middle of the lake. So he decided, I'm gonna go to sleep on that raft <clears throat> in the middle. And uh, if I wake up on the east side, I'll stay brahmachari. And if I wake up on the west side, I'll get married. <laughs> this was the program, true story. And so he laid down and so, and then at one point he woke up and he was on the east side, Brahmachari side. But it was like two o'clock in the morning, it was early. He was thinking, I never get up this early. So he went back to sleep. 
Wedding bells were ringing. <laughs> swaha, swaha, swaha. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's what happened. So that's what happens when you oversleep. You never know what's going <laughs> to There's so many. Yeah, Srila Prabhupada, <clears throat> when he came back from traveling <clears throat> in India, he came back to the U.S. and he made a nice statement, Jai, Sisi Pancha Tadva Kihi Jai. <clears throat> Prabhupada said, out of the four bodily activities, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending, he said the worst is oversleeping. <clears throat> we were thinking it was another one, but he, would, he probably said, no, the worst is... And then he clarified, he said, oversleeping means <clears throat> um, your senses become very strong and material energy looks good. <laughs> Material energy starts, and he says, life is short, and so wasting excess sleep means wasting time when you could be using that time for Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. So Prabhupada made that statement, oversleeping out of the all is the... So we need to rest, and sometimes when we get older, the body is a little bit less, you know, functional. But look at Prabhupada. I mean, look, when he was, the older he got, the less he slept. <laughs> and still he had problems. Sometimes he would, sometimes not even sleep at all, goes right through, and just keep, keep preaching. Sometimes he would be traveling and just preach right through. And uh, Shamsundar, when he, he writes about Srila Prabhupada, he, he's amazed to see how, how Prabhupada, you know, would, continue to travel, to preach, to meet people, to uh, open temples, to, you know, translate his books. He was like ma amazing. <laughs> Prabhupada, of course, Prabhupada, no one can imitate Prabhupada. We don't expect to do what Prabhupada do. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not humanly possible. He's, he was on, f fully on the transcendental platform. But, Prabhupada said, you should try to reduce your eating and sleeping. And then gradually, gradually, then the intelligence becomes sharper. When you reduce eating and sleeping, generally to not to a point where you can't function or it's too little, but then the mind becomes sharper because... If we sleep too much and we eat too much, what happens is we fall into the lower modes, modes of passion and ignorance. And what happens? <clears throat> then we can't really clearly think in Krishna consciousness. And we also get a little lazy. <laughs> so therefore, one should always be diligent to uh, <clears throat> take what one needs to keep body and soul together and then work hard for Krishna. And Prabhupada said, eat sufficiently, but work, make, work hard for Krishna. Sometimes devotees would fast, and then be, when they would fast, they would take extra rest. Prabhupada said, no, give him prasadam, better to do your service. <laughs> don't, don't, don't become weak because of fasting, or spaced out because of fasting. But at the same time, we're always thinking, <clears throat> not always thinking, but where the idea is to make sure we can reduce to the point of nil. <laughs> when Prabhupada was sick in his final days, when he was in Vrindavan, he was he was saying, I'm, I can't eat, I'm not sleeping, there's no question of mating and defending, I'm liberated. <laughs> he said that, I'm liberated. <laughs> So, you know, he was just giving a little humor, but at the same time he was telling us, you know, this is the process. Mm -hmm. Don't wait till the last minute and try to give up everything at the last minute. It doesn't work. We have to gradually reduce and increase our Krishna consciousness. This is the process. Mm -hmm. And Krishna's there, but that, as it says here, Sarvasya Chaham Riddhi Sani Vistam Matab Smirti Gyanam Cha. He's given you knowledge. He's 
He's allowing you to remember what you need to remember. And if you want to forget, we should forget about uh, sense gratification. That's the forgetfulness. <clears throat> okay, so we'll stop here and see if there's any comments or questions. This is one of the old-fashioned classes that we used to give all the time when we first joined the Hare Krishna movement. <laughs> In those days. Now we're more sophisticated. We don't talk about these things. <laughs> but we should always be reminded, yeah, it's about reducing eating, sleeping, giving up mating, and defending, keeping social distance, that's, that's a good way to defend <laughs> social distancing. Dis, dis, distancing. Yeah, keep away from another guy. Yeah. Distancing. Disting. How is that word? Distancing. Oh, you put, I forgot to see. Distancing. Okay. Okay. Any questions, comments, retractions? No questions. <laughs> okay. It's two days in a row I didn't get any questions. Oh, we got a question from... Okay. The question is, can you give class tomorrow? Yeah, is, that, <laughs> is that the question? <laughs> it's uh, more about uh, how many in the field today. Today we are... Um, Hare Krishna. It's more like an appeal and um, comment. Today we are um, preparing to go to Harnam, Sankirtan, downtown Ljubljana. So maybe you can say something important of the, in spite of the difficult circumstances, can you say a few words about importance of well, the difficulty going is, uh, is just the cold, right? Is it a, that's the only difficult? Um, I mean, many uh, levels of difficulties, <laughs> mind, weather, Restrictions, uh, hmm. well, tiredness, whatever. When you get involved in the service, all these things disappear. As soon as you surrender to the service and you go for it, then all of these so-called difficulties just disappear because they're just created by the external energy or by the mind. It's the mind who sees the external energy in a certain way. Or sees one situation. So as soon as you surrender to the idea, okay, then all these things are gone. But if you start thinking, uh, <clears throat> then, you know, we go back and forth. Is it, should I go, should I not go? I mean, you have to make a little bit of discrimination at the beginning. But the idea is that if it pleases Krishna, and it pleases the devotees, then that should be the motivation. Yeah. So, I mean, Slovenia, everybody in Slovenia is really strong. This is one of the healthiest countries I've ever seen. Uh, hardly people don't get sick so much, and they're outside with short sleeve shirts on in the middle of winter. <laughs> Everybody, people seem to be quite robust and healthy in this. And so getting out in the weather is, I mean, it's just normal, right? And you'll see, the non-devotees are out there. <laughs> yeah, that's just, they're always out there. And they're on their bicycles, too. Sometimes I look at the wi out in the window in the morning, and it's like 6 o'clock in the morning, and people are riding on scooters <laughs> and bicycles, and it's like, how can you ride a bicycle in this weather? It's just like you just catch that freezing weather. But so if non devotees can do it, <laughs> and there's no benefit for them, and they just do it because they want to. We do it. We can do it for Krishna. I can't really speak for myself in this case. <laughs> it's really hard for me to give this. A point because <laughs> if I can go out, I'll go, but if I can't go, I won't go. <laughs> so 
Sometimes it's it's like five o'clock is my online class. I don't like to give up that class because if I give it up, then somebody else has to do it. And it's usually Sri Devi, and she's out on Sankirtan, so she can't do it either. Arriba. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, and that the devotees really want to hear that class. It's it's building and it's getting more and more uh, support. So, <clears throat> and I'm trying to build it up right now. So that's that's why it's hard for me to to give it up at this point. If if Harinam was at a different time, then it would be better. Mm -hmm. Thank you. An another question uh, uh, connected with the, with the topic. You spoke about the importance of sleeping or, or not good habit to oversleep. In the Bhagavatam is mentioned that the sleep, the sleep is the f one of the functions of intelligence. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, elaborate a little yeah, how, that, how that is connected? Determination, detail intelligence. Yeah, because uh, when less sleep means that the mind will be a little bit groggy, <laughs> foggy, soggy. <laughs> Boggy. <laughs> so yeah, when the, if the mind is dull, sometimes it becomes dull when you don't sleep enough. So when you get plenty, when you get proper rest, and generally the intelligence is usually functioning more naturally. If you're tired, I give you an example. This is something that I both experience and read about. When you don't have enough sleep, when you're tired, you can remember to do the big things, but you forget the little things. You want to go out shopping, and you're going to use your car, so you run out the door, and then you get to your car, and you, you realize you left the keys on the table in the, in the house. So... Less sleep, or a la when the intelligence is down, you forget the little things. And sometimes these little things are important because, like that. Now the big things you'll you'll necessarily remember, but at the same time, discrimination is a feature of intelligence. And so sometimes to discriminate between sleeping in class and sleeping in the ashram. <laughs> I know this class is putting everybody to sleep, so. Yes. Michael, bring the mic. Thank you, okay. Vala. Uh, thank you for the class, Guru Maharaj. Um, I'm, I'm really thankful for raising the topic of sleep because uh, I find that it's very difficult for my mind to switch off in the night. Uh, many times because of this time difference, I'm meeting clients in the evening, late evening even, and uh, their you know, trauma and difficulties and hearing all that and that goes on and on. And even though the session is over, it keeps replaying in my mind in the evening, especially when it's late yeah, evening. Yeah, so you should replay those thoughts that are important, like reading before you take rest, or uh, hearing kirtan, mm. sweet kirtans, mm. not, not these blockbusters that <laughs> blow you through the roof, you know, because you, then you'll be bouncing in the bed, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, you should, you know, should be, you know, you're slowing down, so those activities should be in, in correlation with slowing down. See, there's no slowing down, Guru Maharaj. It's like, do, 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 and then suddenly turn off the light and go to well, bed. Well, I don't do that. You do that, not me. 
Okay. I don't know how to slow down and I, wind down. Yeah, I listen to some bhajans before I take rest or I read before I take rest. Ah, reading. Or maybe even chant some japa before I take rest. Mm -hmm. But I don't usually meet people late at night mm -hmm. or stay on the computer and then, you know, shut it off and then expect the mind to shut off after. It does. And the mind sometimes does shut off right after you'd use the computer, but you don't rest properly. Because mm. on the internal level, the mind is still somewhat affected by that energy. <clears throat> right, right. Mm -hmm. And many times I, when I wake up, I find that I'm so tired, my brain is not functioning properly, and mm -hmm. the days I am rested and I feel refreshed, then the day is so much better and my thinking is so much better. And when we don't eat so much. Because uh, sleep is affected by eating. Mm -hmm. probably, the problem is that if you want to regulate your sleeping, you have to regulate your eating. Mm -hmm. That comes first. Once you regulate your eating, then you can regulate your sleeping. If you don't regulate your eating, you won't regulate your sleeping. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's connected directly. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai.